What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to the channel. Thank you guys for joining me as I delve into Team Eco's latest PlayStation 4 exclusive. Team Eco has long been a favorite developer of mine. Eco was a beautiful game and Shadow of the Colossus was and still is one of my absolute favorite PlayStation 2 games and still ranks very highly on my all-time favorites. Naturally, after a game like Shadow of the Colossus, I long for Team Eco's next game and boy, was it a wait. The Last Guardian began production in 2007, and in 2009, the game was announced with a planned 2011 release date as a PlayStation 3 exclusive. Unfortunately, after many delays, in 2012, the game's lead designer and director, Fumito Ueda, who also helmed Eco and the Shadow of the Colossus games, left the team, leaving a gaping hole in the development process. After years in development hell, The Last Guardian's development was moved to the new and exciting PlayStation 4, and in 2015, the game was reintroduced to audiences at E3. After nine years of development, losing important parts of the team, and even PlayStation 4 lead architect and creative talent Mark Cerny joining Team Eco to get the game finished, we finally saw the release of The Last Guardian in December of 2016. Well, I played it, and I beat the game as well, and today I'm here to do my review of The Last Guardian on PlayStation 4. As always, this review will cover story, gameplay, graphics, and sound. Story. The Last Guardian puts you in the role of a young boy who has been kidnapped from his village. When the boy awakens in a huge cavern, he discovers tattoos all over his body that have mysteriously appeared on him. Looking for an escape, the boy soon finds a huge, injured creature he calls Trico. Trico is chained to the ground and badly injured. As you try to release the creature, you find a magical mirror that holds insane powers. When you focus it on an object, the mirror causes Trico to shoot destructive power from its tail. You use this power to release the creature, and the two of you set forth on a journey to get back home. The story in The Last Guardian, while some may like it more than others, didn't do enough for me. I felt that even though some questions were answered, that there were just far too many left unanswered. Like what was the meaning behind the tattoos covering the boy's body in the first place? There are hostels littered throughout the world, but the motivations of these hostels were never explained, and even the reason why the young boy was kidnapped in the first place never felt truly expressed. After completing the game, I still have no clue who or what the main enemy was, or why he or it was doing what it was doing in the first place, and these questions are simply unacceptable. You feed Trico barrels of green goo that you find sporadically littered around the game's world, but it's never really explained what this goo is and why Trico is so entranced by it in the first place. The bond between Trico and the player really grows and feels tangible, as initially the creature is hostile towards you. But as you feed it and pet it when it gets panicked, the bond really grows as you go further into the game. I love Team Eco games, and a story like The Shadow of the Colossus needed very little explanation. I feel like The Last Guardian would have greatly benefited from a more fleshed out and consumable narrative that didn't leave so much to the player's imagination. Gameplay The gameplay in The Last Guardian really is honestly the lowest point for me. I love Shadow of the Colossus gameplay. The control scheme was different and new, but it seems like Team Eco went a few steps backwards in The Last Guardian as the controls feel loose and the camera may be the hardest foe in the entire game. You will wrestle with the camera in The Last Guardian more than you would in WWE 2017, and that isn't a joke. There were many times when I completely lost the ability to see the main character, and other times when the camera seemed to just actively work against me. The other big problem with the gameplay is Trico itself. The creature is programmed with what appears to be an incremental bond curve. What I mean is, in the beginning of the game, the creature will listen to your commands, but at a much less frequent rate. As you feed Trico and pet Trico over time, the creature becomes more like a real pet. But like real pets, it doesn't always listen to your commands. As The Last Guardian is primarily a puzzle platformer with some avoiding enemy elements, when it comes to the puzzles, you need to be sure you're doing the right things, or at least going in the right direction. There were many times where I knew I had the right idea, and when I needed my trusty dog, cat, bird thing to leap to a new destination, he simply wouldn't comply. Times like this can drain the player when he or she spends 10 minutes looking at a ledge that you need to reach, telling Trico to jump to that ledge and being ignored, only to sometimes have the creature turn around and head back in the opposite direction. The platforming as the boy felt fine for the most part, and I only felt frustrated truly when I was trying to convince my Trico to obey my commands. While the control scheme can be changed on the PlayStation 4 through the settings menu, 
Team Ego's decision to keep the same controls as their other games seems like a curious choice. While you will get used to jumping with triangle and grabbing with circle, the time it takes to get used to it will ultimately result in unwarranted deaths, as there were a few times I needed to jump and simply let go of a ledge because the jump and drop buttons are switched in Team Eco games. There are also some puzzles that I find it hard to believe that casual gamers will be able to figure out without going to online forums. For example, there's a section of the game where you need to call Trico numerous times until he positions himself to where his tail drops through a hole in the ceiling so you can climb out. Puzzles like this are extremely frustrating because you have absolutely no clue on what you need to do. And after hours of gameplay, most wouldn't expect Trico to react this way. This puzzle alone took me around 45 minutes to figure out. There are also enemies scattered throughout the game, suits of ancient armor that are possessed with power. These enemies' only goal is to grab the boy and take him away to his death, but there is really no way for the boy to defeat them, and the only recourse is to let Trico decimate these foes, which he gladly does by himself. The boy can command Trico to attack, but this is a virtually pointless gesture as Trico only swings at the air when you command him. The fact that you cannot kill the enemies and Trico kills them automatically when he sees them makes you feel powerless as you simply ride Trico pulling the spears that they throw into him out while seemingly watching the action from the back seat. There are some puzzles that I actually really enjoyed. There are large eyes crafted from colored glass that scare Trico and stop him in his tracks at the side of them. While the dynamic is a unique puzzle, very little is explained about these eyes and why they affect Trico this way. Another big question mark. Graphics The Last Guardian is a beautiful game. When you take into account the world that Team Eco wanted to make, it all makes sense. The overgrown foliage and the dilapidated ancient ruins look exactly how you'd expect them to look. The game is massive, and while it's not an open world, it is wide open and is a stunningly beautiful playground to roam. Though I would have liked to see some nighttime scenes during gameplay to show off the very impressive lighting in this game. I've heard some people say this game looks dated, and most people couldn't be more wrong. The star of the game visually is Trico. A giant I've heard described as a cat, bird, and a dog mixed. This creature really steals your heart during gameplay. The subtle nuance in the way it looks at you, the way it moves, and the overall design is astounding. The feathers are beautiful, and the way that they move when Trico twists and turns is really art to me. The first few hours of playing the game, I found myself actually talking out loud to this creature when it was hurt or when it was hungry. And as a cat owner, I saw some incredibly accurate animations from Trico. The way he prepares for a jump is so real that I couldn't believe it the first few times I saw it. The way he bobs his head gauging the distance is something I see my cats do, and to convey that in a video game so seamlessly is amazing to me. Team Eco nailed the look and animation of the boy as well. I honestly feel like I saw a thousand animations for him. I will say that I do see some reused ones from Shadow of the Colossus here and there, but the overall presentation is a visual treat. Sound. Like the previous entries in Eco's catalog, this game has a fictional language, but the use of it was amazing. Every now and then you hear narration from the boy explaining the situation, and it's done very well. But the sounds of Trico steal the show. The growls and the grunts of the creature are amazing. It really gives a sense of scale when you hear something that large growling around you, or expressing interest in an object. Trico at times sounds anxious, depressed, hungry, or hurt, and if you get too far away from him, you'll hear him crying for you in the distance. It's like a crying child, you just want to get back to it so you can let it know it's okay. The dramatic theme music that plays whenever enemy knights appear suits these parts of the game and really pump dread into the atmosphere, and I love the sounds of the boy calling Trico and giving him commands. When it comes to sound, this game does a fantastic job of solidifying the experience. Final Thoughts As a huge fan of Shadow of the Colossus, I was more than pumped for The Last Guardian. The prospect of playing Team Eco's next adventure in the trilogy has been a dream of mine for a very long time. The Last Guardian set out to make the player feel something and experience a game with a creature that is as close to a living pet as we've ever seen in a video game. The bond between the boy and his monster is a tangible one here, but there are some real problems with this game. Too many times did I feel amazed only to be let down a few minutes later by disjointed controls, an angry camera system, and a creature that just didn't want to listen. I wish that there was more explained in The Last Guardian. It seems that after members of Team Eco left, they took their ideas, plots, and parts of the story with them. There was simply too much missing for me here, and at times it felt like multiple games crammed together with the hopes that nobody would notice. 
For what Team Eco accomplished with the creature, they deserve praise. But for the incomprehensible story, seemingly erased narrative, and creature that really does what it wants to do, I cannot recommend this game unless you find a great deal on it, are a huge fan of Team Eco, or are renting it from Redbox. I love Team Eco, but I feel that the turmoil that occurred during development, as well as critical team members leaving, created a gaping hole in the narrative and left fresh ideas dead without proper closure. Unfortunately, there appears to be so many holes that no one on the team could properly fill them. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed my review. It might be a little shock to you guys because I know you guys know how much I love Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, it's one of my favorite games of all time. I was a little let down by The Last Guardian. If you'd like to try the game, I won't try to stop you. It's definitely a unique experience, but as far as a full-fledged game, I just don't feel it. There's so many issues with it for me. You guys let me know what you think about The Last Guardian in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the review, please give a thumbs up to show support for the channel. Join the Facebook group, follow me on Twitter, and you can support the channel at BeastlyGamer.com. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.